Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to some more Heroes of the Storm. Today I'm gonna give you a guide on how to be playing Lieutenant Morales, the latest hero of Heroes of the Storm. And in this video, I'm actually grouping up together with Sakavo right here, who is gonna be playing Illidan. Now, there's a couple reasons why, we'll go over those in a second, but the very first talent that I will be picking and will also be posting down below the like button in the description of this video is going to be none other than Trauma Trigger. So, this is the latest support character that gets introduced, she is now available, obviously she was available on the PTR for about a week right now, but she's now available for like the last 26-ish hours, I believe, and she's extremely good at keeping people alive, okay, and that is exactly the reason why we are playing her. However, early on, we are actually extremely, extremely squishy. This is actually one of the only heroes, or actually the only hero in the game, that cannot heal herself up at all, except when she is out of combat, and that is what a trade is all about. The Caduceus Reactor is a percentage-based ability that basically heals up whenever I'm not taking any damage or not, you know, in combat for more than 4 seconds, and I heal up 3% of my health constantly. So what happens is that, let's say I'm at low health and I get out of combat and I wait a couple seconds, usually within about a half minute, I am going from 10% to full health. Um, by just simply not taking any damage and that is really really important to keep in mind It is basically like a much like a much stronger version um, of Muradin's ability who also you know obviously heals out of combat The only main difference with that is that I have no abilities that I can use to target myself other than my W My W ability I just casted it right there on the monk and what happens is um, he will take reduced damage for a little bit The Q ability though which is my main healing is this one right here, and that one actually doesn't, you know, apply to myself. I can get a talent for that at level 13, where it will also give me extra healing to myself, but as it is right now, I simply don't have the option to. Now, one very important thing to do, or to note as well, about this ability, is that with the Q, I can actually switch targets on the fly, constantly. So, I'm now healing the uh, Illidan player, now I can be switching to Monk player, and there's no cooldown on that. I can switch between those constantly. The only problem is that it channels indefinitely, and I can walk um, all the time as well. I'm not completely sure why we have two heals on top, honestly. Um, but we can uh, move while casting that as well. The only problem is that it does cost a pretty substantial amount of mana. So, um, if, I, if I'm not paying attention to it, I will be running out of mana very quickly. Now, if you're healing someone with full health, um, they will actually, you know, it will actually not cost you anything. I'm trying to heal up the Illidan player right here. Trying to body block to the best of my abilities. But as you may have already guessed, because I have no real self-heal, um, other, um, other than the fact that I, if I stay out of combat for a little while, I will be able to, you know, keep myself alive. <laughs> oh my god, that is so incredibly close right there. Um, but other than like me being able to stay out of combat to heal myself up, I have to be very, very careful about my positioning right there. I have to make sure that I am close enough to my allies so that I can, you know, throw the healing beam from A to B and between the different characters. But on top of that, I have to make sure that I don't die myself. And obviously, the range of this ability is pretty short as well. So I need to, I need to stay relatively close to the fight, but not in the fight. Um, out of all healers, I tried playing a damage build for this uh, for this hero as well. Out of all healers, this one is by far the worst at like dealing damage. I mean, you really should not be concerned with dealing damage with this guy. Um, it's most likely not gonna work anyway, and, you know, you should really, you should really be focusing on, um, you know, just, um, just ensuring that you're in the correct position rather than that you're using your auto attacks. Even though you can use your auto attacks while you are, you know, playing and while you are, um, using the healing abilities, um, you would much better be, be off positioning yourself a little bit better. Uh, because we are so flimsy early on, we pick the advanced block at level 4 as well, and that is also the reason why we picked the trauma trigger. So the trauma trigger basically makes it so that whenever I am at, um, a relatively, um, a relatively, um, low amount of health, the W ability will trigger on myself automatically. And that's all just to wait until level 13. At level 13, we become significantly more uh, sustainable because what happens is that, well, first off, we have a lot more mana because, hey, we're later on into the game. Um, but secondly, we get this talent called Couples Therapy. And Couples Therapy makes it so that um, every single time I use the healing beam, I will also be healing up myself. But we're basically just trying to stay alive until level 13, um, at which point we become a lot more sustainable. Now, for the most part, this is not a hero that you will be playing like many of the other ones. I feel like this hero is great in certain counterpick situations, or counterpick scenarios rather, um, where you are gonna be 
um, where you are going to be, um, for example, up against a team composition that is very, very la low in burst. For example, let's say right now we would be playing against a Zeratul and a um, Kerrigan, for example. Okay, this is quick match, so we're luckily we, we were lucky we didn't draw into that. They have pretty sustained damage right here in. Um, Sylvanas and, and Vala, for example. Nova is still very bursty. But because I am very squishy for a healer, I actually am not very good at, you know, staying alive at all. So let's say we're up against a Zeratul or a Kerrigan. They will be able to nuke me down from high health to zero in almost, you know, like a couple seconds only. And I will not be able to heal through that. So you got to keep in mind that you're going to be great as like a sustained damage he or a sustained healer. And actually you have the highest single target heal sustain in the game. Um, but you also got to keep in mind that on top of that, if you're not paying close attention, you will not be able to keep anyone alive because if they nuke too fast, you will not be able to do very much at all. And a good team will likely realize very quickly that I am not able to heal myself and they will be able to nuke me down from high health to zero very, very rapidly. So I did go right there with the Irradiate. The Irradiate is basically an ability that makes it so that whenever I'm healing someone... Um, oh god. Oh, get out of there, boys. Whenever I'm healing someone... Um, they will also basically get like a burning rage right there, so they get a damage aura. So right there, mispositioning on my end, immediately got sniped down right there almost. I'm not gonna waste my mana, I'm afraid, on... Uh... Oh, don't die. Ooh, not gonna waste my mana right there on uh, healing up uh, Rexar's pet. But this is all fine so far. Uh, the E ability that I got as well is basically this mine that I throw in this line right here. And the mine will automatically push back anyone who is hit by it. So it's a very nice ability like that. Uh, you can spec into it, get a lot more damage out of it. But honestly, it's not its not great. It's not great at all. Um, but um, the Irradiate is still a great option. You can also be going for Cleanse right here. Cleanse obviously also a great option. But with the recent nerfs they made to it. And the fact of the matter is that I'm not very great at using it. When I'm already trying to position myself, um, you know, in all the other ways that I mentioned. I just feel it's a little bit nicer to be going for the Irradiate here instead. Um, obviously, always pick talents depending on what you need in the game. Mispositioning right there on my end. Oh. I didn't actually think they would all come from that area. I thought they would more come from the top and they, they sniped me down very rapidly. It's a good example right there. I got stunned and immediately got taken out. Now, luckily, uh, Uther did go a little bit too deep right there as well. We're still relatively early on into the game, so this is not the worst worst thing. But you can see, like, if you get targeted and you activate your W ability on yourself, which is exactly what I did, it honestly doesn't really do all that much. Like, it doesn't really do enough for that to be very useful. Um, now, I think this hero is especially going to be great in combination with, for example, uh, a Tassadar or a Tyrande or um, other secondary supports that will allow me to survive that early game. Uh, up to the point where I will be able to start healing myself a lot more. So once again, gotta make sure that I'm positioning myself properly. <coughs> and just healing up as much as I can. But you can see, like, even though I've, I'm healing so incredibly fast, and even though I'm making sure that everyone stays stopped off, I'm still, I'm still very low in mana right here. Now I'm gonna stop healing Muradin, because he's a little bit too aggressive here. Doesn't really help me out very much. Unless he's obviously in the middle of things. Uh, I did get stunned. Alright. Now, the real kicker and the reason why we are queuing up with Illidan in this game... Oh, get out of there! Oh my god, so close. Is the level 10 ultimate that we're going for. So I got an ultimate ability called Stim Drone. I got another one called Medivac, but that's not the one we're going for on this map. Uh, Medivac basically makes it so that, you know, you can throw down a Medivac. And it's a really fun ability to use. And you're extremely mobile. And what happens is that basically... Oh my god, this, this body block right here. Ugh. And Medivac basically makes it so that every 50 seconds you can transport the entire team across the map. Um, anywhere where it's really necessary, but... Um, we're not gonna go for that one. We're gonna be going for the Stim Drone, and the Stim Drone makes it so that someone, I can Stim basically, I can basically Stim them up, just like Stim Pack works in StarCraft 2. Um, except that, at that point, they will have increased attack speed and increased movement speed, but the increased attack speed is actually 75% extra. And obviously, on a character like Illidan, that is a crazy, a crazy amount of extra. Uh, so I am gonna go back right now, make sure that I have mana for the level 10 talents. Um, immediately. Guys, oh my god, don't go down, please. This would be a really bad time to go down. But here we go, the Stim Drone. Uh, the Stim Drone is gonna be... <gasps> the Haymaker right there! Wow! That was a beautiful Haymaker! Nice one, Mura. <laughs> he literally kicked her behind the gate. 
All right, yeah, so we do see that the extra attack speed obviously comes in right there from uh, the metamorphosis and all that as well. Uh, but I can activate my stim drone right here on him, um, like stacking it up even more. Now, I don't think we're going to need it because he's dead anyway. Uh, but normally, you would go ahead and use the stim drone in team fights on Illidan or on Raynor or on Vala or whoever is using an auto attack build. Um, and you will be able to basically nearly double that damage also because they will be able to chase a lot better. Now, the cooldown on the Stim Drone isn't very long. Um, it's, I believe it's 90 seconds, actually. The cooldown on the Medivac isn't very long. Uh, so you gotta be a little bit more careful with activating your, uh, with activating your Medivac ability instead. Um, but always good so far. Uh, but definitely gonna be going for, uh, for Illidan right now when activating my Heroic. That's gonna be, it's gonna be the one ability that I do need to, uh, do need to use right there. <coughs> Alright, so just positioning myself right now, thinking about where the fight could be coming from. They would likely be coming in from the lane, so as long as I'm positioning myself in the back, I should be able to target everyone down. Now keep in mind, we are pretty close to our level 13 talent, but we're not quite there yet. So if they want to take a fight here, they would likely be want to take it out right now. Now, one thing to note about the E ability is that it's not actually all that great at uh, crowd control. You may think that it's absolutely amazing for like pushing people away, and I guess that is in, in a way true, but you should more or less treat it as a way um, where you are um, trying to, you know, just push them away when they are chasing you down, or push them out of position when they are all a little bit too clumped up and that's not something your team can handle. Um, it's not very reliant because it doesn't really... It doesn't really... It's not, not as easy to aim, I suppose, what I try to say. Now, the Couples Therapy, the level 13 talent, is going to be the one that I'm going for right here. It will make it super easy for me to stay alive a lot longer. Because whenever I use my Healing Beam right now, it will also give me extra... Oh, God. Whew. Nice zoning, actually, right there. Or attempt of zoning to... Uh, or by the, uh, by the opposing player. <coughs> Murden, you done? Okay, let's go. So I activated the Stim Drone right there. Gonna heal him up here as well. Oh god. Nice, nice abilities usage right there by them as well. Getting a massive amount of healing. But I will be able to keep him up and keep him alive right now. That pushing right now is pretty insane. Once again, switching target right there. Making sure that he is stopped off. Trying to make sure that Muradin stays alive right now as well. And Illidan just basically single-handedly took out the entire fight right there. If we can have a quick look at the hero damage, it looked very quickly all of a sudden at the top right there. <laughs> that, that was pretty insane. So you can see the combination that I was trying to go for right there. The metamorphosis in combination with the stim drone, pretty damn good. It gives you a super, super high amount of sustain. And I had to try and switch between Muradan as well, who we was trying to drop, or we, we was getting to drop low in health and all, all these kind of little things, but as long as you're managing your mana remotely efficiently, you will be able to do a stupid amount of healing and a stupid amount of um, damage as well through that ability. Now, as far as constantly auto-attacking goes, as you can see, Karazim is slightly lower than me right now as well. Um, but that's because I guess he just hasn't been in fights. For the most part, even when I was playing a full damage build, I was actually still having less healing than the Lily on, on my team who was going a full healing build. So, for the most part, you should not be... Uh, you should not be concerned with anything like, uh, like trying to deal damage with this hero. Just focus on positioning instead. Now, until level 13, we're very squishy. But since we did have a set- Wow! Whoa! <laughs> that was nice, I didn't even see that. Very well done, my Muradin. Damn. Jumping in right there, immediately landing the Stormbolt as well. Very well done. Um, but, um, I was trying to say something, I forgot. Um... Alright, since we did have a second support in this game, it was relatively easy to survive that early game, right? Um, if we wouldn't have, I'm gonna, we're gonna try and break the gate and then activate the Stim Drone once again. Here we go. Wow, actually, the Stim Drone didn't go off right there. I have a uh, 10 second cooldown right there because the, uh, the arrow came in, the Wailing Arrow. Alright, where's Illidan? There he is. Alright, Stim Drone. Come here. Okay, Stim Droning him. He is Stim Droned right now. Trying to stay relatively close to get her! Oh my god, so close. But all good. Stim Drone doesn't last very long, so that's something to keep in mind here as well. Uh, at level 13, I or at level 16 rather, I usually end up going for the Shield Sequencer. It's very tempted to go for the System Shock as well. 
Uh, the system shock does help out a lot, but I'm gonna be going with the shield sequencer right here. Basically makes it so that I can cast my W ability twice. Now, most of the time, whenever you're playing this hero, it may look like you don't or you're not doing as much healing, and I guess that is true in a way, but because all of your abilities are single target heals and not so much AoE heals, like for example a Brightwing or a Karazim or, you know, a Malfurion or basically any kind of other healer in the game, um, all of this healing is done to a single target, and uh, for the most part, you shouldn't be looking at the screen anyway all too much because it doesn't really tell you that much information. Um, but it is just something to keep in mind. Like, if you see a Karazin player not being super high on those rankings, it doesn't necessarily mean that he or she is playing awful. It just means that they're, uh, you know, single target healing and not so much uh, healing everyone up right now. Like, for example, Monk shines in these tight little places. Are we really gonna push in here? That seems like a risk. All right. Looks like we're all gonna go to the bottom lane. I got my stim drone. <laughs> all right, activating it right here on Illidan. And he is activating his metamorphosis right there, trying to heal everyone up once again. And you can see that damage is just absolutely superb. Activating it at the same time as the ultimate that he has. And all of a sudden, that wailing arrow came a little bit too late this time around. And they had no way of really staying alive right there. Now one thing to note as well about the 16 ability that I actually haven't pointed out yet is that the uh, the second one is free. It's sort of like a second storm from um, from um, our beloved Tessadar. Now at level 20, I would have been going for um, the Caduceus Reactor 2.0. It just makes sure that you get extra mana back constantly as well. But it looks like this game will not be able to make it that point to that point because we are right now. Finishing the core. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more content, hit that subscribe button. And I want to thank you guys all for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile. And I will see you in the next one.